How's it going? Retro Prime here. Uh, I'm gonna sort of talk about my f sort of first impressions of the C64 Mini because I've had it for like what two days now, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I emulate Commodore 64. I've got my Commodore 64, but it's packed away. In fact, I think joystick port two is broken. Um, needs a bit of a fix, but I've got the C64 packed away. Um, I emulate sometimes on my phone, sometimes on my tablet. Mainly, I emulate either on my laptop or on my Coinox. Coinox? <laughs> Coinops hacked Xbox, which is upstairs. But none of them really give me an authentic gaming Commodore 64 experience. You, you, I mean, you're very aware you're playing an emulator, and it, um, it just detracts somewhat from playing playing the games. But that's not the case with the C64 Mini. Now, it's not perfect by any means. There are problems and kind of issues I've come across so far. Um, I went straight out of the box. It's fantastic. The games run well. They look amazing. Um, the joystick. It's a Competition Pro 2000. I think it's a replica of, and it does, you know, it does the job. You don't really feel like you're using a sort of inferior model or an inferior quality joystick. My one issue, my one issue is it's got rubber feet that keep it steady. No suckers, I like suckers, but whatever. <laughs> Can't have it. Um, these are leaving hella dirty marks on my table and on my hands. Um, they're, you know, they're just scra scraping off. Um, so that's something to be wary of if you're going to use this joystick and leave it on a surface, maybe have something on your table or whatever to, to stop it from marking it. Um, other than that, you know, it, it does feel really cool and really good. Um, oh, and I'm leaving uh, leaving text on the old uh, basic there. Um, other than that, I've been using this really old sort of USB keyboard. I'm not even sure where I got this. I think it's I think I was using it for my PS2 back in the day. But um, yeah, that works. Oh, as you can see, <laughs> works fairly well as well. Um, you know, so, and I've been using to add extra games, just a, a normal Philips UHB, uh, USB drive UHB. UHB, what am I talking about? Just a normal USB drive, basically. Um, so far, so good. Uh, adding games so far isn't the easiest. Um, it can be done, though, and it's a bit, a bit of a chore. I will link two videos underneath that show you how to um, add extra games through USB support and using BASIC. Um, I won't do a video, I won't show you how to do it yourself because I mean this guy in the link below is a lot better at explaining things than me um, but yeah I've been adding games and it's been great, we've been playing some absolute classics um, the games that come with it, the 64 games, about 50% I know and love and 50% I've either played once or twice or wasn't familiar with but I am having fun enjoying these games um, other than that, what can I say? one of the issues, so if you want to run, if you want to use like extra USB sort of controllers or if you want to use the keyboard and you want to add extra games there's only two USB ports and I've come across the problem where if I want to upload a sort of text heavy or a keyboard heavy game um, I can't do it because it can't, it won't have the joystick, the keyboard and the USB plug all in at the same time because it's only got two ports so I went and bought a multi tap for the USB um, apparently many of these work this fucking one doesn't, unfortunately, so um, this is kind of redundant. It was only a quid though, so eh, it's not a big deal. But once I find one that works and you can have keyboards and blah blah blah, all plugged in at the same time, it's going to be a much nicer experience. Um, the only other USB joystick I've tried is I've got a PS3 USB joystick that didn't register or work at all. Um, but apparently, updates are coming that'll make it easier to add games. Um, make it more compatible with USB devices and, and, and keyboards and, and joypads and joysticks. So um, yeah, um, if you've bought one of these, keep an eye on the official website for updates because those will be crucial. Um, crucial. And enjoying and enjoying your C64 Mini. Uh, yeah, so what I'll do now is I'll show you a few games running and I'll show you how to sort of set up and start a, a new game and I'll show you a way to store an extra four games on your mini straight away without needing to update firmware and stuff. So uh, yeah, let's have a look. Now, when you boot up the C64 Mini, it takes you straight to the screen. There's no sort of um, start up menu or anything like that. It just brings you straight to this. There are options. So you go down here and it gives you the, the uh, sorry, you're probably going to hear the click clack in the joystick. But it brings you to this, which shows you uh, Pixel Perfect, European 4.3. You know, it gives you this sort of North American CRT look. I usually play it on Pixel Perfect because it gives a more authentic look, but just uh, Pixel Perfect CRTV that is. Um, but we'll play it on Pixel Perfect just for now. Uh, you know, this one is language, so obviously English, Sp Spanish, Italian, Dutch, and France, French. Uh, and this is the options it gives you: just USB keyboard options, uh, legal notices, system information, and factory reset. 
Um, apparently, if you're going to use updated firmware, you download it from their website or any other source you can find it on a USB, put it on the USB, stick it in the C64, and when you boot it up, um, there will be another sort of option there to update your system. Um, I believe there already is a system firmware update, but I've not installed it yet, so this is straight out of the box, unupgraded. Um, yeah, so you can see the selection of games. I'll just... Uh, you can turn the music off on the on the uh, old menu if you want. I hear it's a pain in the arse for some people. I quite like it though. Um, yeah, so you've got a selection of games. Boulder Dash, Bounder, California Games, Chips Challenge. One of my favourites, Creatures. One of my absolute favourites. That's what, um, whenever I do boot up the old Commodore 64, that's the one that I, I play first. Uh, yeah, and it kind of, you know, it's a very simple menu. Very simple indeed, so I'll show you, well, I'll show you Creatures at first. Because Creatures is one of those games where it's like multi-loading. And it can be a chore waiting for it, but you know, so this is creatures. Oh god, the screen! So good! So good! Ding 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 ding. Unfortunately, the cheat for this, or was it creatures 2? No, I can't remember. It was this, wasn't it? Where you, you um, licked your finger and rubbed the port, will not work. Um, one assumes. <laughs> but yeah, so. I'll put me just on, I think. And as you can see, it's crisp, clear graphics, and it's not going to pick up on the video very well, but the sound is lovely as well. Uh, yeah, I love this game so much. This blew my mind back in the day. When I, when anyone says to me, I mean each to their own, but when anyone says to me the Spectrum's better than the Commodore, <coughs> I think you'll find how very wrong you are. Uh. Right, so I better remember not to actually just sit and play this. So you press one of the buttons and it brings up three options. Um, it's one of the buttons, it's, it's this button here. You can't see because it's not, it's not light, but it's one of the four uh, back buttons on the pad. Brings up this, it's save and load game, virtual keyboard and exit game. Virtual keyboard brings up a virtual keyboard on the side that you can use with a joystick, but it is very much a chore. So if you're going to play a key heavy or a key intensive game, it's not really the best. Um, save and load. Each game gets four save states and you can just... Press the save button and that instantly saves it to there and so you can afford it save saves. Obviously it's awesome and uh, you can exit the game. I'll just quickly show you this because I completely forgot before but um, I said you could add in and save an extra four games. How you do that is just like the game's basic has four save states but if you load up a game in basic like I have and then save the state while that game is running not only does it retain the save state but it retains the game. So right now I've got D Fantasy World Dizzy, Space Doubt uh, Death Wish 3 and Blue Max all saved on there and I don't have to re-upload them, just the save states see if it contain the game itself. So if I load that up... There you go, a bit classic Dizzy! So I mean you can do that with any four games obviously and it means you've got four extra games ready to go uh, straight from the off which is kind of handy because we all have our top five games and that's the way to have four of them on it. Uh, right, back to the original video eh? Um, there has been talk of controller to sort of on-screen delay. Um, I've seen other videos saying that it's 0.3 um, of a second delay um, on button presses. If that is the case, I've not noticed it. I'm sure they'll sort of deal with that in later firmware updates. Um, but for now I'm quite happy to play and it certainly doesn't, it's not noticeable. Uh, let's see another game. Oh, Nebulous. And there we go, this is Nebulous. Um, press the start button. This is one of these games, I'm sure I got the demo of this in Commodore format. Sure did. I'm sure, this is where I played it. I don't actually remember having the full game, but you know, back in the days where um, cassette copying, it was easy to get your hands on a game. And again, the graphics of this game are quite sort of unique and, and good looking for the, especially for being on a Commodore 64. You can stop. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the games look and run absolutely fantastic. Now this is with the CRT filter on, um, it does make a slight sort of difference, it makes it feel more authentic like you're playing the real deal, um, but it's not really a sort of deal breaker, it doesn't enhance the experience other than just if you're an old fogey like me who remembers playing it this way. Um, yeah, but it does, I mean if that's your thing then, then you know it's there and you can use it and it's, oh, it's an option, I'm not very good at this game by the way. <laughs> 
as well as the games that are installed on the system, you get C64 Basic, which can do everything that Basic could do on the Commodore 64, and this is the method for accessing and installing or playing new or extra ROMs on the on the, the C64 Mini. And basically what you do is you get a USB stick, get a D64 ROM or image for the game you want, put it on the USB stick and rename the, the image file the 64 so the 64 dash drive 8 save it as that or it won't, if you don't do that it won't recognise it, it won't find it then you go into basic and either using the keyboard or the virtual keyboard type in LOAD the way you would with a normal Commodore 64 inverted, I mean like quotation marks and then it would be asterisk close quotations comma 8 and then you would press return and that would load up the game and it'll say ready then you type in run enter and that would start the game but what I've done is I've got searching for blah blah already I've got um, five games installed on one image so what I need to do is type in L O A D quotation marks dollar sign close quotations comma 8 enter Searching for dollar sign, loading ready. Then what I can do is type in a list. And it will list the games that are there. So I've got Tau Seti, I've got Death Wish 3, Dan Dare 2, and Daily Thompson's Decathlon in there. Um, I'll link a video below showing you how to get these five or six games onto one image and how you can access this. Um, so the video will be in the description below and it's worth it if you want to play more than one game at a time because if you don't, you kind of have to just do it one game at a time and it can be quite the pain in the backside. Uh, so for here, what I'll do is I'll type in load and uh, let's see what we'll do. We'll do Death Wish. So it's Death, I've renamed it. Remember, if you are adding the games to this, remember it and rename the file names to shorter names. Because you have to you have to type in load whatever the file name is. And it's a muckle long name like it mine's was Death Wish 3. You've got to type all that in. And if you've not got the keyboard and, uh, attached, it can be a major pain in the arse. So there we go, load death on drive eight. Searching for death. That's a horrible sentence to say out loud, but that's it ready. And then you type in run and hopefully it should work. There we go. And that's it running. Um, because these are being accessed as disk files, they do sometimes have a higher loading time. That one wasn't too bad though. So there we go. Danish gold offers Deathwish 3. <gasps> Cracked. Ooh, cheeky. Um, so it says F1 for unlimited lives, F3 for unlimited weapons, or space to start. So I'm just going to press space. And here we go. Deathwish 3. A game in which you can shoot grannies and prostitutes flash their knickers at you. I remember playing this game. Do you know what? I've played this game loads and I still have no idea what I'm meant to do in it. Oh! Screw you! Oh! And I blocked the copper by mistake. And listen to that music. I mean the C64. God damn, the Sid music, man. I can just sit and listen to this all day. But I won't. <laughs> And there you go, that's my sort of little first look at the Commodore 64 Mini. Um, I had many, my childhood was great, but many of my favourite memories are sitting in the kitchen of my my family home at night with my brother, my brother next to me loading up Commodore 64 games and waiting for them, you know, playing them, and it's the same with the Atari uh, 2600, and we'd spend hours on these games trying to work out how to do them and how to beat them, and it was fantastic. The Commodore 64 Mini is the closest I've gotten to recreating that feeling, other than the Commodore 64 itself. Um, and I just can't praise it enough for that. It's it's doing great, and with updates coming, it's going to be fantastic. So yeah, I highly recommend it for Commodore 64 fans. I'm not sure what you're going to get out of it if you're not a Commodore 64 fan, to be honest, because the games, some games have aged okay, but the majority of like those era games have aged quite poorly, and it's more a nostalgia thing than anything else, I think. But um, yeah, so as someone who prefers to play on the real hardware other than an emulated hardware way. We like pads and you know I, I like to play the, the games on a system with, with a decent unique eh, unique authentic feeling pad and that's certainly a way to do it with this so I'm very happy is what I'm trying to say yeah um, like I said I'll link in the video below how to put ROMs on um, how to put uh, more than one ROM on at a time 
and uh, I highly recommend if you're going to be using your C64 Mini a lot to subscribe to the dude whose videos I'm going to link because I certainly have. Uh, yeah, so I hope that gave you an idea of what the thing's about. Um, oh God, I mean I've got a few beers chilling in the fridge in the garden and I'm going to be playing it quite a lot tonight. Oh yeah, so I'm very happy. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, more Transformer stuff coming soon. I did a, I did two videos in a row that weren't Transformer related and my subs went <laughs> So um, stick with me, you will get your Transformer fixed soon. Uh, other than that, I hope you're having a pleasant evening and I shall speak to everyone soon. Yay! Eesh.